In 1980, Fred Newsom was sent to prison, convicted of murder thanks to eyewitness testimony. Fifteen years later, Fred was released. Why? Because Fred was innocent. Fred hadn't murdered anybody. He was falsely convicted because somebody else made a mistake. But the jury put their faith in the recollections of a witness rather than the pleas of the man in the dock. Experts in the field of eyewitness statements urge real caution against relying too heavily on eyewitness statements. 87% of experts warn that confidence in judgment is very poorly correlated with accuracy in eyewitness statements. So why are we so easily fooled by our own and others' recollections of events? Well, we seem to make the incorrect assumption that we are able to record events exactly as they happen and then recall this information at the same level of detail as we first observed it. The issue is, none of that's the case. Both learning new information and recalling old information are active processes and therefore are never, really never, exactly accurate. Of course, in day-to-day -day life it doesn't generally matter if some of what you swear to be true is actually total codswallop. But in other circumstances, such as the courtroom, these natural human fallibilities can have disastrous consequences if left unchecked. And it's for that reason that eyewitness statements have been superseded in the hierarchy of evidence by more objective measures, such as forensics. Elizabeth Loftus is the undeniable giant in psychological research on eyewitness testimony. One of her most famous studies in collaboration with Palmer in 1974 demonstrates how easily eyewitnesses can be led off course by a sneaky leading question. In this classic study, participants were shown a video of a road accident. Having watched the video, participants were asked a series of questions about the scene, including a key question asking the participants to estimate how fast the vehicles had been moving at the moment of impact. However, the question was worded in such a way as to lead the witness towards a particular speed. All this by changing just one word in the question. You see, where some participants were asked to estimate how fast the vehicles were travelling when they contacted each other, others were asked how fast the vehicles were travelling when they smashed into each other. Despite the video being absolutely identical, participants in the smashed condition estimated a speed 10 miles per hour faster than those in the contacted group. The researchers tested this effect with five different verbs – contacted, hit, bumped, collided and smashed – and each verb resulted in a different average estimation of speed. A week later, in a follow-up interview, the researchers asked participants if they saw any smashed glass on the scene. Even though there was no smashed glass in the original video, those participants who had been primed with the concept of a high-speed crash in the smashed condition were most likely to report that they had seen broken glass. The power of a word. The following year, Loftus published another paper on leading questions and reliability of eyewitness testimony, this time with Zanny. This time the difference is even more subtle, but amazingly influential. Participants again watched a video of a road accident, this one involving multiple vehicles. Having watched the video, participants were asked a series of questions about the scene. Some participants were asked whether they had seen a broken headlight. Any idea of which word will be changed? Did you see a broken headlight? Did you see a broken headlight? Did you see a broken headlight? The word that was swapped out for the other group was the smallest blink and you miss it word in the whole sentence. A. Yes, instead of being asked if they had seen a broken headlight, the other group were asked if they had seen THE broken headlight. The researchers' use of the definite article THE in the question led to twice the number of false reports of seeing a broken headlight in the video. There was no broken headlight in the video, but that sneaky little three-letter word led so many witnesses to swear that there had been. 
Now, at this point, you might be thinking, well, what about when a witness isn't asked a leading question? Surely, if every word is carefully checked for implicit meaning before questioning, the witness could then rely on their testimony. Well, it still might not be so reliable. As Crombag et al. demonstrated in the aftermath of a real, very tragic plane crash in 1992. A plane had taken off from Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam and shortly into the flight had lost control of its engines. The pilots turned the plane around to return to the runway, but the plane lost height and crashed into an 11-storey apartment building. Whilst the story had been widely reported in the news, the accident itself hadn't been captured on camera. So 10 months after the crash, Krombag and colleagues questioned 193 people about it. When asked if they had seen the plane hit the building, 55% of those that had been asked reported that they had, even though they had not been present at the time and there was no video footage. In a follow-up study by the same team, the percentage of people who believed they had seen the crash had risen to 68% and 67% of interviewees described how they saw the plane hit the building horizontally. Further proof that they were providing false testimony because the plane was vertical at the time of the crash. So were these supposed witnesses compulsive liars? No gooders who can't distinguish between truth and imagination? No. Even more concerning, they were perfectly ordinary people like you and me who had fallen prey to our biggest strength and weakness, the human ability to self-deceive. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something about eyewitness testimony and your memory. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. If you've got anything to add, please uh, pop it in the comments below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to Psychology Unlocked and that way you won't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.